Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Igorar, and welcome to Let's Araxium, the show where I wave my planet's ID dick around for the entire internet to see. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Naginata, a traditional Japanese anime pole weapon. We're going to be going over some tips and tricks on how to deal with the existential dread of being stuck inside all the time for no particular reason, and I'm going to talk about my new book, 101 Ways to Shine Your Pulsar C. The secret is to you, Squirt. There's a lot to talk about, so let's take a look at the stats. But first, this. <laughs> You're such an ass. Starting off with a fire rate of 659 rounds per minute and a damage model of 143 damage up to 10... No, wait, sorry, 167 damage up to 10... No, wait, what? 150 damage? What the hell is a 150? Oh, okay, 150 damage up to 10 meters, dropping off to 125 damage at 65 meters with a velocity of 490 meters per second. Uh, why 150 damage? I do not know. This stat block is weird. 125, 143, 167, 200 are all common damage numbers on weapons because they add up to exactly or very close to 1000. 1000, by the way, is the total amount of HP all the non-bullshit infantry classes have. Anything in between these numbers doesn't really change anything about damage output because it doesn't change the number of hits needed to kill somebody. It does extend the ranges at which notable damage drop-off does happen, but we're just gonna take that nice little fact, roll it up into a tight, nice little spliff, and we're just gonna... We're gonna smoke that one later, you'll see why. Next is a reload speed of 3.2 seconds short and 4.4 seconds long, with a magazine size of 90 rounds. Pretty good, and I like it. And I'll tell you something I don't like, though, too. It's recoil. Now, I'm not gonna sell this as a gun that's difficult to shoot. It's not. But between the gun's kind of long time to kill and average velocity numbers, I don't know. I just come to expect a little bit better numbers on the recoil end of things than this. Something's off about the Naginata's character. It's it's strange. Crossover features from multiple damage models. I just... It... Wait a minute. Traditional Japanese anime weapon. It's a trap! Yep, there's a big ol' secret hidden underneath the skirt of the Naginata. It's unique trait of capping its maximum cone of fire bloom while standing still, which is also step one of an easy two-step process of getting shot in the fucking face. So, is this gun worth your time? Will Ra remember to smoke that spliff? Well, we'll find out in a minute, but first, a word from our sponsors. Welcome back to High on Haas, and I'm your host, I Go Rar, and tonight our special guest is here to talk about his newest book, 101 Tips on How to Shine Your Pulsar C. I Go Rar, how are you, sir? I'm good, I'm good, good to be here. Well, let's get down to it. Where do you find the time to host your own talk show, write books, and interview yourself? Well, it's simple. Ever since my e-dick and ego became so large it collapsed in on itself, I've been warping around the multiverse, exploring infinite timelines and realities. Fascinating. So you must have seen amazing things, like worlds where the cyclone isn't overpowered. Nope, doesn't exist, unfortunately. Oh, well, that's a shame. Well, back to your book. It wasn't met without controversy. Critics of your book have claimed that it is riddled with spelling and grammatical errors, is full of unproven and untested pulsar shining methods, and paints you as the author, as a narcissistic, self-centered egotist that is so far up his own ass that he would probably be the only person in the world that he would allow to interview himself. How do you respond to that? You forgot handsome. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have for tonight on High on Haas, and tune in next week for our special guest Megatron Attacks, who's gonna show us how to clean recursion off of your harasser. So that brings us to our final question. Is this gun worth your time? And the answer is questionable. I cannot deny the value of a weapon that can just keep spitting lead while maintaining its accuracy over a sustained 
period. In point hold situations, this thing plus a lasher secondary will let you pound on any doorway you damn well please, provided your idiots don't get you weapons locked. But in every other situation, 1v1, small fights, honestly anything that isn't a point hold situation, this thing's like shooting a Tonka toy. Moving from cover to cover, or any movement really for that matter, will have you shooting with the accuracy of a stormtrooper who's pissing out a car's window driving down the freeway. Naginata, it's important that you hear this as it is too a lesson that I have had to learn the hard way. Being different doesn't always make you special. In fact, if history is any metric to go by, it's often what gets you killed. Now, as per usual, my complaints are hyperbolic, overstated, and homoerotic, and if I had to give some sort of rating to this gun outside of its elements, eh, I would call it usable, but that's really about it. Even if you manage to get your footwork right and take advantage of the Naginata's unique trait of capping its maximum cone of fire while standing still with a quick stop and squat, or as I like to call it, tactical teabagging, it still just doesn't offer a whole hell of a lot over other LMGs. Its rate of fire, reload speeds, mag size, recoil are acceptable, but that's really where the story ends. Outside of point hold situations, I see zero value in this gun. But just like a cucumber with a condom on it, it might not be capable of accomplishing many things, but the few things that it can do, it does oh so well. So for the rest of this verbalized shitpost, I am going to be explaining to you why this gun can be decent, or as my alternate title for this video puts it, Let's Araxium, how to make shit shine on a silver platter. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but we live in a bit of a redeploy side meta, or as I like to call it, the planet side combat express. Toot toot, all aboard! Yes, the planet side combat express, where the only thing more fragile than the beacons and the routers are the egos that placed them there. When it comes to the cat, mouse, and orbital strike game that is router whack-a-mole, the Naginata is one of the better weapons you could ask for. With just a small group of your most highly trained heese and shreklings, you too can be eating ass and smoking grass with the Naginata. Speaking of which... <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Smooth. So let's talk about the numbers that drives this thing a little. So as I mentioned before, its odd damage model of 150 has no significant changes in its damage output as it does not change the shots to kill needed. It does, however, change the ranges at where considerable damage drop-off does happen. Effectively speaking, its maximum damage range is about 25 meters due to the way the numbers work out. This longer range for significant damage drop-off has a huge impact on how effective it can be in trying to lock down a small area around you. Now, you might ask why do something as convoluted as changing the damage of the round to artificially extend the maximum damage range rather than simply extending the range at which damage drop-off starts? Well, it's simple. Confusing the shit out of the player is a time-honored planet-side tradition. So time-honored, in fact, that sometime after the Naginata was released, they did exactly what I just suggested to a handful of LMGs just to toss in an extra layer of inconsistency to the mix, which is, it's just, ugh, oh, classic planet side. Uh, let, let's nerf the lib again while we're at it for old time's sakes, huh? So now that you know how it works and where to stick it, what should we strap onto it? Well, first and foremost, the sight. As always, I personally believe that sights are a very subjective thing, and if a 6x scope on the jackhammer's working for you, then by all means, go for it. Although, this time would be one of those situations where I highly recommend the 1x, and only the 1x. Shooting more than 40 rounds at a time with a single pull of the trigger can be a fairly normal occurrence with the Naginata. As someone that plays with a relatively low mouse sensitivity, any zoom that is higher than a 1x forces me to lift my mouse off the mat, place it back at the top to continue correcting for recoil, and that's just a massive pain in the ass. And no, for the last time, the issue is not that my desk is too crowded with empty beer bottles. You didn't hear that, shut up. 
The grip and the compensator is something I both recommend, but if you wanted to run the barrel naked and use the extended mags instead, I wouldn't blame you. Again, the recoil isn't that hard to control. These choices are more about recoil reduction for the sake of not having to lift my mouse so often more than anything. The choice between soft point and high velocity ammo is a very odd one. Due to the fucky damage numbers, soft point ammo only adds a measly two extra meters to the ranges where notable damage drop off occurs. And for the same reason, high velocity ammo doesn't seem to change anything about that 25 meter butter zone, but also gives you the boosts of having high velocity ammo, so... Yeah, I don't know. Pick your flavor on this one. I stuck with the high velocity myself, but having alternated between the two a few times, I, I really could not tell the difference. Man, this thing's a goddamn hot mess. So my little piece of advice to anyone that wants to Araxium this gun is this. A screwdriver is not a hammer. Doesn't mean I'm not going to use it that way. There's nothing wrong with having some tools that are meant to be beaters, but the line has to be drawn somewhere, and when it comes to the Naginata, it is a tool that must be respected. Slam it into any situation that isn't a point hold, it is a useless piece of junk. Outgunned and outperformed by pretty much else available to the heavy assault. But give it the tender loving care that it needs and just set it up just right. It's not a bad little gun, but it's still not great. Anyways, that's it for this time, guys. My name's Igo Rar, and I'm gonna spend a suspiciously long amount of time editing my cock and balls in cyberpunk. I'll see you next time.